Hello everyone. Welcome to the Kiosk Value Working Group meeting, August 26. Please add yourself to the agenda and tell how you're feeling or anything you want to share. Um, the meeting minutes are in the chat. Okay, the first thing on the agenda is to update the README of the working group. I have created a PR for that. And if you can take a look and see, do you want me to share the screen? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I always think it's helpful for the people who watch the recording. Okay. Can you see the screen? It's coming. Yep. Yes, I can. It's right here. Okay. So here's the PR. Uh, if it looks good, then if anyone can merge it, because I have uh, revised the uh, README. I have updated the README based on the revised format. Okay. Could you kind of summarize what, what you did here, Vinod? So uh, I've like changed the formatting uh, as per the new formatting, which is a standard format for all the working groups. And instead of problem statement, I've changed it to the goals, uh, to mission, to purpose, and who should join. Like uh, it was haphazard, different groups have a different, but as per standard format, I've uh, incorporated the same template from the standard format. And yeah, the meeting agendas, I've provided the link and meeting timings, I've pointed to the website. And I've added the academic value, which was not previously added, but in the last PR of the release metric, it got added. So maybe, I don't know, it will create a conflict or not, I'm not sure. Uh, Should be a pretty easy to resolve merge conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, contributing, this was like uh, just detail, which is uh, release metric and it's same pointing to the website, like following the standard convention. And like uh, we have here meeting notes, meeting calls, this is now all pointed to the website uh, meeting notes. And then we have the committee chairs and the contributor link. And the last one is license. That looks good to me. If everyone agrees, then if someone can merge this PR, it will be helpful. Sure. Yeah. Right. You can do it, Matt, or you want me to? Oh, you go ahead. I was trying to do it on Vinod's browser. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> this always happens to me in these Zoom meetings. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, Thank no you problem. for taking care of this. Uh, I'll see. Okay, so this is this uh, is the top one, right? It's one fifty three. Just to make sure. Yes, right. yes, one fifty three. Okay, so next agenda item on the meeting is uh, fair metric, and Matt G, you had an action item to put some text around it. I'm not sure. Uh, Gosh. Yeah, no, I have not done that. When did I, oh, that must be an old action item. I feel like I've missed a few value meetings, so. Yes. 
I've been <laughs> I, I've been actively reconciling like slowly as I do the fair metrics with chaos. So uh -huh. um, I I could take that action item for next time. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now I assign this action item to Sean. Okay. I just posted that link to GitHub citation files. I didn't know if we want to like make a note of that somewhere or where, but I think it's important to include it somewhere for reference. Uh, the references which, uh, uh, when you say reference, oh, you mean like the fair pro, like the fair group? Yeah. I don't know where it belongs. Um, yeah. So Steven Jacobs shared some of the links to get some ideas about the fair metric and those, uh, links were in a doc. Is, is this the doc, uh, uh Elizabeth? Uh, last time I recall, uh, Jacob, uh, Stephen Jacob shared some links to look for those things. I don't know. Maybe about it's... citation mile. There's a fair metric link. There's about citations. Yes. Uh, let me open this. Maybe it should go under that research or reputation or something. Yeah. I just remember that's yeah. how important citations were. And now GitHub has this, this function that you can include in your repos so that people can cite your work. So yes. That. Yeah, that was last time uh, it came in the meeting that GitHub has recently released the citation option. So you can have a formatting, how to cite your repository if somebody is using it or your software. Okay. So maybe here then, under references? Uh, this one or which one? It's like EP and BIP text formatting outside your repository. And that was also one of the things for even a journal meeting that how we can incorporate this for the chaos working groups that how to cite our work or any mm -hmm. metric if anyone is adopting it is do you know if i'll look into this as i as i take this action item but james howison at texas has put together a system i think called site you like that site like, as. Site yeah. as. i always get site you like and site as backwards i yes yeah, site as uh i don't know if github has implemented site has or a derivative of it but both i think are are valid ways of citing software or stating that your software can be cited in this way. Unless, Matt, you think I'm misinterpreting what's happening or Elizabeth. No, I think that's right. I, I don't think I've seen this before. So it's brand new. Like they it's just a recent release. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna make a, a I'm gonna make a comment for myself just so I remember that. Yeah. Just so, also like uh, the question is then how we incorporate the same citation format for the entire chaos repos or any metrics we are adopting. I think the the citations for chaos would be at the re, at the metric level actually. I think so too. Yep. So this is not. So we kind of have two things going on here. One is what is what is a citation metric for others look like? And then how can chaos benefit from this service? Is that right? Yeah, two separate. Okay. Um, and we don't, do we have a metric right now that is about citing software? 
don't is it a work in progress because i mean I this think, is the, and i don't think that research so. and reputation i think it, touched on citations okay this is yeah this is about an explicit mining which i, I haven't looked at research and reputation so i don't know yeah, no, it it has not been developed it was just discussed in the meeting and uh, the idea came that we should develop a metric on research reputation To me, I would, if we have researcher reputation as a potential metric, this just seems like a, like tools collecting the data kind of thing mm -hmm. for now. As a distinction. So the, the, rep, the researcher reputation is, well, uh, working on the same document as I'm looking at, I clicked on a link and I'm, and what link? Are you? I, well, I'm on, I think I'm on the fair metric, and research reputation is a distinct metric. Is yep. that right? Okay. Yes. Uh, let me put it in the chat. So this is a researcher reputation metric. I posted it in the chat. So I could see I could see things. Researcher reputation seems like it could incorporate either things like the fair metric and or some of the other chaos metrics that indicate use utilization. So do you think we should uh, have just one instead of two? Or... No, I, I agree with Matt that I think they're different things. I, th I think research reputation has broader, is broader, is more broad because there's also a metric that has nothing to do with citations uh, that researchers use, which is downloads and a uh, number of labs using it, uh, contribute. So they use a lot of our regular chaos metrics to establish researcher reputation. Um, so I'm, I'm, go ahead. Well, I, I, I listening to you talk, I'm wondering, like, you know how we have um, kind of a new program that's starting that is around it's from the Asia Pacific call, right? Which is around the, the metrics models. models. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So is research research really could be a model that um, includes a variety of things. I agree. I, I, you know, now that we have this enough metrics that we can group them together in these models, I think research reputation is one that is less of a discrete model and more of a Less, less of a discrete metric and more of a model. Yeah. First cup of coffee. I'll get going. First cup. It's nine o'clock. I had to I had to walk and feed the <laughs> the dog. And I don't know if you noticed, but uh, my office is rearranged, so I was up a little late uh, moving it around so I could see out the window. I got tired of staring at a cement wall. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so then I would say this, this metric basically just doesn't exist. I mean, maybe I'm starting to think like in the metric spreadsheet, we start trying to track. Yeah. But like there's a maybe another tab, yeah. tab, tab, another tab. That's always the answer in spreadsheets. <laughs> that, that, or a, that or a pivot table. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay. I, have a, I have a quick question. Did we not have, or maybe I dropped this, but I feel like we had a metric around tenure, professor. Yeah. Tenure? Yeah. Yes. RPT. Yes. RPT. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So, would so the citations also be in that? Do you do do your do your universities care about citations? Oh yeah. Oh yes. We just released that <laughs> metric. Let me open that. Maybe that's where I was thinking that would belong then. I don't know. Yeah, where is that? Yeah, academic. So here, academic open source project impact is the metric we Yeah, so we got rid of calling it RPT. Yep. It's, so it's academic open source project impact. And we have mentioned it in the objective, like support RPT. What is the, what's the name of the other metric that was uh, the, a model? Researcher, researcher reputation. reputation. 
So I think this researcher academic open source project impact and the fair metric are both part of that reputation. No, I, wait a minute. Yeah, they're both part of reputation, I think, as a model. Oh. Can you type this in the minutes? So oh, yes, the thing uh, you're yeah. You know what I mean? Like so. Yeah, I yeah. Like just do it with like bullet points. You know what I mean? Just type it. Like what would be the top level thing to you? Yeah, oops. Um, can I? Let's see. This is probably a question for that metrics model meeting, but it would be great to have a template like this that we use for metrics. That we can also use for the models. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you could almost follow this. Like, what yeah. Is, what is the description? What's the objective? What's the description of this model? What's the objective of this model? And then what metrics are included in it? Yeah, and maybe how much yeah. we utilize this model. Yeah, and then what metrics are included in such a model? So I'm capturing these notes directly uh, instead of meeting notes. I'm capturing these points in the uh, template itself. Okay. So then to Elizabeth's question on um, academic open source project impact like we should probably this new tool that is from github i'm putting some notes in the meeting minutes just under research reputation as a metrics model yes and then the one that's under currently under review we should probably include like tools providing the metric could be this GitHub tool. Like that's yeah, certainly part of it. Should I add that as a comment in that issue? Or... Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Say so there so seems it, like there's an additional tool that could help in this metric. So GitHub, I guess, is not counting how many citations. It's just providing an option how to cite it. Yeah, it's like how to yeah. post a yeah. Yes, yes. But yeah. it's not counting like how many citations as Google Scholar. That's fine. Does or, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, it's okay. a, it's it's a tool that helps in the that process. Yep. So, uh, listening to this, should we then uh, keep it here or? Propose it to the that uh, metric model working group, or what are the thoughts on this? I think so. I don't think metrics models need. To, well, we should bring it to the group, the metrics models application group, and let them know that we're doing it. But I don't think that we would expect that group to do all of the models. I think it's pretty clear that every working group is going to end up having metrics models and, and those metrics models may span metrics from more than one working group. Yep. Okay. So maybe then we should keep it and we'll also discuss it in the model and how, see how it yeah. evolves. I just don't think the app ecosystem group has any background to even know what to do with this. So we need to build it. Yep. No, it's an interesting question because the metrics model working group, like I'm not sure how that balance would work. So um, like as an example, academic researcher reputation or just researcher reputation would be a candidate for a metrics model. But you're right, Sean, like the metrics model working group may not necessarily be the people that would build that. Like I'm thinking about who would even be joining that call. It's a lot of the folks from Huawei. It's, yeah. um, I mean, it's just people who may not really care or understand what should be in that model. You know what I mean? And so then the work of creating the model gets kicked back 
to the value working group. Mm -hmm. But then the metrics model itself might contain metrics from other working groups. So how yeah. do we how do we then incorporate like an evolution metric? I'm not sure. Like I'm, that's an interesting question. I maybe we could this is just a proposal but maybe we could think of metrics models as independent things that are developed in the metrics model slash app ecosystem working group and maybe they're defining the template and the parameters but any working group can propose a, a metrics model and have it go through the review process and that it's i almost expect most of the metrics models to include metrics from more than one working group. Yep. And I, and I can't, I don't think there's the expertise in that app ecosystem group to like evaluate or talk about even metrics from most of the working groups. So maybe a suggestion can be like, if a working group is proposing a metric model, they can develop the model and then share it with the uh, metric model group for like uh, further uh, dissemination to the journal. So because that group will be more focused on, okay, this is the question, these are the various metrics and, the, and, and, and like work can happen both ways, but uh, like, for example, we are working on this, we can develop it and then share it for them to disseminate to the broader audience. Yeah, I, I look at them as editors for more form and consistency. Yes. For metrics like this, in this case, so that we produce a metric model that is consistent with the way that they want them produced. But as I said, I don't think they can evaluate the content of it. Not that they can't, but I think that this group is the group that is well positioned to evaluate the content. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that the first meeting is on 17. So let's see mm -hmm. how it turns out and we can yeah. uh, share with them. Okay. My guess is that any metrics listening, again, is still just to this conversation, that any metrics model is going to be like eight, maybe 80% from one working group. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, supplemental metrics from other working groups, and um, it's just the responsibility of the other of the working group. So, for example, research or reputation is clearly a metrics model that originates here, um, but it would be the responsibility of this working group to to circulate that model to other working groups, just to see if there's any points of connection. Maybe we could do that in the community meeting as well. Mm -hmm. Just say, hey, if there's a new metric model, working groups take a look at it. Yeah. And this is like primarily coming out of value, or it's primarily like the um uh the badging program. Like I think that can be a metrics model. You know what I mean? Like it's yep. primarily coming out of DEI, yep. but you may have some thoughts as to other things that should be included as well that are coming from your working groups. And it's quite possible that people will be like, yeah, no, we've got nothing to add. That looks good. I also envision uh, these being released like as official kind of packages um, when we release our, our metrics in the future. I, I agree, actually, what Sean was saying, like having a review period, I think we should probably just end up following the same model. like. Yeah. We built this metric model. It's built against this template, to your point, Elizabeth. It's now under community review, right? We can still follow the same path. So now that we've solved all of those problems. Yes. <laughs> we got it all sorted out. It's going to need to have a meeting. <laughs> we don't, or we can come to the meeting well prepared now. Yep. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm making a note in the minutes about the metrics model process, and I think I'll add it to the app ecosystem minutes that the value group proposed this structure and would like to discuss it with them. Does that seem reasonable? Yes. Matt, does that seem reasonable or should I? Yeah, no, 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 we can talk, we can talk about it there when they meet again. And then we can talk about it because we do have a member, we have the metrics model meeting as well, just because we have all right. Yeah, global, there's a global interest in this topic. We Will they be using the same minutes document? 
Probably not. But we okay. actually right. probably should. I don't know. Should should I should I bring so should it be brought up in both groups then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um so I just on. linked in the chat to the app ecosystem minutes. Thank you very much, because it is not on their meeting notice. <laughs> oh, I think they need to have a standard readme then. These have been deprecated current notes here. <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that I have them. Been... Sorry. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is value of a project to be a part of larger ecosystem. Uh, so maybe uh, Nico, you can add some thoughts on this. Oh, let me quickly read it again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if this is more an app ecosystem question or a value question. Um, but the thing I was, I was um, within the end of energy I, I operate in, we see a lot of value and things we could attribute, attribute to it ourselves to project in projects uh, working along with each other with common interfaces. Um, so they, they operate well, work well with each other. And also having a set community. Um, I think the, the CNCF, of course, uh, the projects there are working nicely with each other is a, is a great example. Um, it's more like a multiplier than the value itself. Does that fit for it to be a value of our, our metric or even how to, how to measure it? I, I think from the value perspective, it is valuable, but I'm still lost on like how to measure that is a still question to me. Would it be a simple, uh, a simple like yes, no, or just a simple count? Like I'm thinking of like, you know, like a stack, like a lamp stack. So, you know, you're, you're PHP, you're in this lamp stack. So that would be like a, a one, you know, you get one point. <laughs> and if you are lumped in with other things and other places, maybe then you get more points or more counts of like how many times is your project kind of packaged up? If I'm understanding kind of what you're saying here is like, like the synergy of having like this whole kind of nice little package of open source projects together. Um, increases the value, the synergy. So I don't know if it would be just a simple count instead of trying to say like, oh, you're in this, this group and this group is more valuable than this other group. Like, I think that could be kind of complicated, but I don't know what y'all think. Uh, what I felt from this is like, you being a part of a bigger e ecosystem are adding value to that system or you are taking the value from that ecosystem? So for example, as Elizabeth pointed out, being a, your project being part of that PHP package, are you adding value to that or you, being there is the value contribution. I'm, I'm thinking, are, are you trying to give value to the ecosystem or are you taking the value from the ecosystem or how Mine you're is, positioning that pro, uh, project? Mine is not, that's not how I see this. At least when I read this, I read this as strength in numbers. That's just how I read this. Mm -hmm. So like if I look at LF Energy, like there's, by identifying projects that are part of the, say, the CNCF landscape or part of AutoGrade Linux landscape, like 
there's value then that is accrued by CNCF. Mm. So it, it strengthened numbers. And so it's not to a project, but it's to the collection. Like the sum is, what is the phrase? The whole is greater but, than the sum of its parts. Something like that. That's the phrase. Two plus two, five. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm that's what I read here from from Nico's Nico's issue, which is cool. I mean, that's that's why I like this so much because I think it starts ascribing value not just to a project or from a project, but to a collection as a whole. Is it, is it then so simple to to say is it part of a larger you know larger ecosystem? But um... It can mean multiple, of course, but um, like, are you part of a, of a bigger organization with a similar goal? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, to, yes. to Benant's point, sorry, to Benant's point, um, you know, does, does a project get a value? Do they, do they gain some sort of like legitimacy or, um, you know, some kind of like raise in their standing by being a part of that group? So like would someone feel safer, you know, using that project because now they're kind of, they've been recognized and are acknowledged in this group. I would think so. I mean, I, I think not necessarily like um, what is described here, but I mean, the chaos project I mean, derives value from being a Linux foundation project, Just period, <laughs> you know? Um, so so if I simplify a question uh, for this metric, like thinking in terms of goal question, so can I say my question is like, can a project add value to the ecosystem? Like how much value a, a, my project is adding to the ecosystem? I mean, that's a, that seems like a holy grail kind of a question. <laughs> that seems really hard. Because, yeah. <laughs> because this is what I'm getting from this discussion is like how uh, being part of that bigger ecosystem, how I'm like add contributing or like. Uh, so I think I think it really is more about how or how researchers explain the value of building and maintaining software as a research activity because it's not traditionally considered a research activity. So wait, I. We aren't really talking about research here, I don't think. Um, I thought we were talking about the academic stuff. Did we move on while I was taking notes? Yeah. yeah. So, so, ac <laughs> so, it in terms on. of academic credit, software is not generally granted equal or even any academic credit in many contexts. And so, this is about not so much the value of a contribution, which could be evaluated by people outside of academic evaluators. It's about the, how the how this metric helps academic evaluators to see the value of software construction as an what academic. What metric are you talking about? Uh, I'm, talking about I'm talking about this metrics model. Did, did, oh, yeah, we're not talking about that anymore. I'm sorry. I was busy. <laughs> I was I was taking notes and making sure it got on the agenda. And I'm sorry. I missed I I missed the transition. Yeah, we're talking about like an open source project being part of a larger ecosystem and the value that is derived by that project or given by that project to an ecosystem. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, I'm with you now. I have to jump to that ecosystem issue then. Yeah, it's on the screen. I, I actually think the, I think the easier thing to measure would be or to think about would be the value that, if you want to just talk at the project level, the value that a project derives by being part of that ecosystem. Because if I think about the chaos project, there are things that I could probably kind of pinpoint. So for example, we derive value because we can connect chaos con with OSSNA. Like we can connect our events with, with these larger events. This is it's a clear value derivation. Yeah, right? yeah, there's no um, ambiguity the, about that. Right, like a the chaos project has been talked about in keynotes by Jim Zemlin. Like that's a, a huge, huge value, value information. Nico, did you have a comment too? 
yeah on on the events it's like having a, a platform to uh, announce chaos being there and uh, the issues to come up yeah. um even like i mean I, you, this wouldn't be in the metric but like the chaos dei badging program like we badge lf events like a lot of them and i think it's because of our association with the lf that we like we were more proximately closer to a lot of other LF events than if we were in the Apache Software Foundation or if we were in the Software Freedom Conservancy or whatever, wherever we might be located. So I think we badge a lot of LF events because we're we're located close. Um, I mean, we have access to to things like LFX, that whole LFX system, the the budget system and the insight system. This was part of whether or not this should be chaos software, right? That was that conversation in Slack. But and there are a lot of things that we derive like indirect. And I would imagine that CNCF projects are the same. I know they're part of the LF at the highest level, but then there's the whole CNCF. And I would imagine it's quite similar for CNCF projects. And I would imagine it's quite similar for LF energy projects. I would imagine it's quite similar for um, like auto grade projects, you know, that kind of go into that space. So I think it would be easier to write a metric that is what does a project, what value does a project derive by being part of a larger ecosystem than it would be to write a metric that is what value does a project provide to an ecosystem? Listening to this discussion, if you look at the organization focus area, we have these two points already in discussion, not yet formalized that what value organization bring to open source project or what organization drive from an open source project. And similarly, what uh, an open source project contributes to the ecosystem and what it takes from the ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, I think they're, they're similar. They're just at different levels, right? Yes, yes. The organization is fo focused more on the organization side here and open sources project focused to the positioning in the ecosystem space. So Nico, does this discussion kind of fit with the spirit of the issue that you had put in there? Yeah, so far I'm, I'm also uh, running this around in my head. Um, wrapping my brain around it. So yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and there's, there's one part, but I think that's more with the app ecosystem, more the, the technical side of integration with, with code and dependencies, uh, like the GNOME or the KDE app ecosystem. Um, but for more an organizational point of view and LF Energy and CSF, CNCF, the examples I gave, I think this is uh, on point. Could you, could you, okay, could you talk a little bit about the, the technical value that you see? Because I know that Sean does a lot of work in risk as well, yeah. dependencies. So maybe what you're seeing there. Yeah, what's, I think the question is, what is the relationship between dependencies and the definition or boundaries of an ecosystem? They may not be, I don't think they're the same, but maybe they are. I heard some, some, uh, discussion in one of the podcasts I listened to about from chaos this weekend but um, I could see projects depending on each other of having uh, having a, a that you would typically deploy them together um, so maybe they mention each other in the documentation that could be something or um, they mm -hmm. have shared dependencies or they use similar open standards um, or they have contributors uh, which contribute to both projects. That could be a metric. That's, yeah, that's, Sean, do you see that in, in risk? Are you looking at dependencies that way? Like how contributors are present in two proximately close projects? We have this, we have the data in Augur. We don't have a, a metric yet for that because most OSP 
the people who are really digging deep into dependencies are the ASPOs right now. And I know the LF is also doing it, but on a much grander scale. And the concern is to understand, for example, one company has a lot that's not an open source large producer has 11,000 repositories when they include all of their dependencies and getting a clear picture of what the health and sustainability of not just those projects are, but if there's a dependency that spans a number of internal projects or other projects, making sure that they can raise the level of importance of contributing to or giving money to that dependency over others. And right now, I think, except for Augur, all of the tools only look at things, a metric or a, or a repo group at a time. And so that's where that is, that is very similar to ecosystem because like if I'm bounding an ecosystem by energy, chances are all energy companies have a common set of software or a very largely overlapping set of software they use. And that is the, that is the boundary of their ecosystem. And so to the extent that you're interested in which dependencies are at the highest risk across that ecosystem, then I think it contributes to what your issue is about. Did that make sense, Nico? Totally, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the thing about ecosystems is there's, al some, there's always a group or an individual who decides what the boundary is when you're actually, when the rubber hits the road and you're actually producing metrics. But we, yeah, but we do have a, a metric about dependencies. So we're actually using OSF scorecard now as well. But that's again, just project by project. It's looking across projects. That's I think the most valuable. This, um this idea of, of ecosystem value also um, applied to uh, software that works with other APIs. Like that wouldn't be a really a dependency, but that would be a, a close connection. You know, if you have, like I'm thinking of Zapier for instance, like mm -hmm. it's not open source, but you know, they can, they have a lot of partnerships with other software that allows them to consume and, and you know, um, use the APIs. So like that would be their ecosystem. So I'm not sure where that fits in in this, but I think that that can also be an indicator of like a close partnership. Yeah. The APIs are compatible. Double down on that. Um, within the NF Energy, um, we, we even have an architecture and a, a data steering group. Um, so we, we it's, it's almost um, um, it's a very waterfall design. Like we have this, view on the world and we want to fill in the gaps um, and we want to have these building blocks i mean there, there might be duplicates of course um, it, it's all organic but and we want to have them integrate in certain ways so it's, it's quite coordinated and yeah api driven or interface driven now you want to call it so that's really uh, valued maybe in the interest of time i would say then uh, what will be the next step for this is like should we think of it as a metric uh, I, I see two metrics from this metric uh, project contributing to the ecosystem and project driving from uh, ecosystem and uh, but we don't have a so maybe where these two will live on our focus areas is it organizational, individual, communal, or societal? I'm not sure. Probably communal. Probably communal. Uh, valuable to the community of users, so yeah. Going by the yep. headings, um, I think it's the most close description. OK, so. And, to come up with an action point, I, I heard some good uh, suggestions on, on um, certain aspects of this metric, and I can put that in a document. I think I can start a, a Google Doc. Yep. I assume yeah. I can. Um, yeah, that'll be <laughs> great. So my... Which one would you take a look at first, Nico? 
uh, I think deriving. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and like Vinod said, uh, it's probably easier. I think he said so. Um, and, and then maybe we can we could say okay, these are the most relevant aspects that work in reverse. I think so too. I think to Sean's point, I think like contributing value to an ecosystem is that would be a very that would be very challenging. It'd be cool if you could figure that out, but very challenging. But I'd always have to measure like the removal of value from an ecosystem when somebody goes off the rails and gets a bad pull request removed. <laughs> I mean, merged. Okay. Yep. And I think the honestly, like the if it's a, if it's about deriving eco, I think some of the like just the ways to measure are like you know, um, I think it's around like ev events. It might, it could be around dissemination of work. It could be around financial support. It could be around, like, you know, like, like as an organization or as a community, you would ask yourself these things. Like, am I, am I yeah. deriving any, any value with respect to assisting with my finances by being part of this ecosystem? The answer could be no, which is fine. Um, am Even. I deriving any value on my events by being part of this ecosystem? You know what I mean? And what value would that be? I recently reviewed a paper which was focused on how projects drive governance value from a ecosystem or a foundation or a project like LF exactly. is an ecosec. Yeah. And they provide a governance structure to the projects. Yeah, I mean, when chaos started, there was a lot of work in that regard from the LF. Sorry, Nico, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, like you are saying, gonna say that uh, yeah, that's that's uh, quite important. And yes, it, it helps so, to get uh, projects off the ground. Yep. It really, it helped a lot in the chaos project to get the project, the support from the LF to get the project off the ground. So very right, cool. Yeah. Thank you. We are at the end of the time, so thank you for the wonderful discussion. And we have two action items. So. I own one. Yep. And my deadline for getting something back to Michelle is earlier than the <laughs> deadline for that. So we should be good. Yep. Thank you so much for all your support. No, thanks for really, this was really an engaging discussion. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Hey, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.